Morning, everybody. I only have a couple of things I want to get done today. One is I want to get a little bit more paint on that bass glide bait that we were working on last week. And I also want to cast a few of these resin bluegill in that brand new silicone mold we made. So let's get after it. I usually start out by playing with some different colors here just to see if I can kind of get in the in the right zone uh, with the pattern I'm painting. And so I've been playing with a few different gold colors that I have and also some silvers and grays. And on this first pass, what I want to do is get some of these grays that are down in the belly. And uh, you can see that I've already done a little bit of that on this one piece right here. Let me get a little bit closer. And the color that I've found for that is actually a mix of one drop of each of pearl white, pearl black, and pearl silver. And that gives me just the right tone that I'm looking for in that belly area. And it does kind of fade up into a little bit more of a gold as I go up, but here in the belly, to me, that looks very, very silver. So for this first pass, that's what I'm gonna do. Took me a little bit longer to find just the right gold color for the top half, but I think I found uh, a pretty good one. And what it is, is it's a mix of iridescent yellow, pearl satin gold, and pearl white, equal parts. And I think that just gives me a nice kind of subtle gold color, depending on which way you face it and how the light hits it. We're gonna go back over that with the airbrush a little bit and do some different things to kinda of make it look a little bit more natural. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and put a gold spot on each scale. So even though I'm not trying to match this photograph exactly, I still think I could probably get a little bit closer to that color. Um, and I think the way to do that is to take little baby steps here, work it up really slow, but I think what I'm gonna do is kind of mist over the back with a little bit of this pearlized silver. Um, again, I'm not trying to cover anything, but I think I'm just gonna give it kind of that speckly hint of gray on it, just to kind of tone it down just a little bitty bit. I feel like that did a lot to kind of unify the, the whole thing and bring it together. I did lose a little bit of brightness in it, but I think that's okay. I mean, if you take a look at this um, photograph here, let me get that a little closer. If you look at that, there's a lot of speckle and you know noise kind of all over the thing anyway. And so I think I've achieved that here with this one. Um, I do want to add a few more colors to it to maybe uh, make it pop a little bit more even. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here along the belly with some, uh, some of this pearl white um, and kind of lighten that up just, just a hair and kind of unify that just a little bit more. I know at this point we're kind of getting into some really you know finite uh, changes to it and I don't even know that you can tell much difference on that last pass. Uh, what I've done here, but particularly when you hit the light on it, you can really see the difference. It just ties it all together and makes it more cohesive. Um, I do want to get kind of a little bit of glint of gold up in the top. If we look really close, you can see all kinds of color speckles in there, tiny, tiny little speckles. And that's kind of what we're trying to mimic. So we're going to do a fine misting over the back of this with a little bit of this iridescent yellow. I believe I'm ready to put the first clear coat on this thing. And uh, I'm gonna be using KBS Diamond Clear, which I've got in my jar here. Um, however, this time I'm gonna be changing my process slightly. I'm going to hang it and let it drip rather than rotate it, hang it like so. Uh, I am gonna to have to brush it on because of the size of this lure. I can't dip it, obviously. So 
I've got a, a fine brush here that I will I will be using and then I've also got some uh, KBS thinner to clean my brush after I'm done. Equipment wise I'm going to be using a respirator of course and then I've got my fan set up with another filter here. This one's a carbon filter so it should help capture some of those fumes. Uh, and then I've also got some vinyl gloves. So let's go ahead and get that first uh, clear coat put on. Here's a look at where we're at. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how this is coming along, actually. Um, I did go on ahead and put some eyes on there, you can see. But uh, I think from here, uh, all we lack is putting a decal and signature and one last clear coat over it and the body should be done. One thing I will say is that it turned out to be pretty unnecessary for me to have foiled this thing because I put so much paint over it, you really can't see the foil very much. And so probably moving forward, I won't do that on a, on a bass pattern. If I were doing a really silver pattern with just a little bit of paint on it, that'd be perfect. But in this case, there's so much paint over the whole thing that the foil just completely gets covered up. With the exception, I will say, I did put the scale pattern foil inside this joint just to give it a little bit of uh, pop. And I do think that that was worthwhile. But out here on the body, uh, I think that was just kind of a waste of time. But anyway, it still looks great. I just didn't need to put in all that time foiling the body. One thing I did learn is that I can put foil over this and it does look really good. So if I did want to do a silver pattern, that'd be the way to do it. Hey y'all, I want to take a quick second to tell y'all about some new merchandise that I've got in my store. I've got some new shirts like these Lure Smith shirts and these Lure Maker shirts, which are available in a variety of colors and sizes along with a whole bunch of different decals available on my website, which I've got a link to below. Everything you buy there helps support the channel and makes it possible for me to create more content for you. I'm gonna go ahead and pour my first resin uh, bluegill in my brand new mold here. I've got a little bit different method for figuring how much resin I need to fill this, uh, because actually I am in the middle right now of pouring some more of these. Since I know exactly how much I need to make these, and these were both carved out of basswood, I'm going to go ahead and just weigh this one, and we'll compare the two just to get a good starting point here. Okay, so that one's 11.4, and this one is 19.3. So not quite double, but I think what I'll do is I'll just double my recipe for this, uh, for this first bluegill, and then we can go from there. We're gonna brush a little cornstarch into these molds. What that does is that helps prevent surface bubbling. I actually had uh, quite a few subscribers share this tip with me, so I wanna thank y'all for reaching out and sharing your wisdom. You don't wanna leave any in there though that's piled up because it will uh, ruin your detail. Just an ultra thin coating over it. Okay. Okay, I know this is wasteful because I didn't plan ahead, but I think I'm going to need to put this in a bigger cup. I'm afraid this will be too full to mix in the smaller cups. I was getting away with these smaller ones for that other lure, but... Now I'm going to need to use the bigger ones for this one. If this is a little bit confusing, it's because I'm doing this kind of a roundabout way. But basically what I've got is I've got part A and part B of the uh, smooth cast. So this is still A and this is still B, but they have 
half of the microspheres in each, and then I'll mix them all together, and that's when the reaction will start. And then what I do is I stir those two together really well, and I feel with the cup, and when it starts to warm up pretty good, then I need to pour it in my mold. I don't have a whole lot of time to work with it. Okay, I feel like that went relatively smoothly, but we're going to let it set for uh, uh, 10 minutes is what it says to do. But this, uh, this will expand a little bit and fill all those little nooks and crannies, but we'll see what we get. Pretty happy with that. I think I might pour maybe one or two more of these, not really sure, just for some testing. But yeah, that came out pretty nice. Well, that's all I've got for you this week, but I am trying real hard to get a full build video out to you maybe next week. I can't make any promises on that because life's getting pretty hectic for me, but just know that I am working on stuff and I'll get it to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.